How about crawl budget? I would love to talk yeah. about crawl budget. All right. Yeah, I think it's a term that's thrown around a lot in the industry, and it's really an, it seems like an abstraction of mm. something that is much more technical and concrete. And I think we, we can get a lot of clarity through this video. Fair enough. <laughs> Welcome to SEO Mythbusting. With me today is Alexis Sanders from Merkle, and uh, you are a senior me. account manager. If I'm, yes. yeah, okay. So yeah. you work with a lot of different uh, companies and accounts, and have like different kinds of, of work. Yesterday we were discussing fermented food because that's a hobby of yours. Yeah, definitely. That's I went on a trip, came back, and my boyfriend had fermented like everything, everything. under the so, like, yes, lots of kimchi. Oh my god, we have so much kimchi. <laughs> it's insane, <laughs> like in a huge jar. But we're not here today to talk about kimchi. So what are mm -hmm. things that you're clients and customers are dealing with and what's the question that you often get or what's the topic you would like to discuss? I would love to talk about crawl budget today. So to get started, yes. before we even talk about anything, mm -hmm. can we start with what is crawl budget? So kind of like Fair recapping enough. some of the stuff that Gary yes. covered in his Google Webmaster article. That's a very, very good point. Actually, the, the article is a fantastic starting point mm. into this entire journey. <laughs> so when we are talking Google search and indexing and thus crawling, we mm -hmm. have a bit of a like, um, mm. what's it called? Trade-off to make, and the trade-off that we have to make there is we want to get as much information mm -hmm. crawled as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. but we don't want to overwhelm the service. Definitely, right? And would you categorize that part of it as crawl limit? Yeah, pretty Almost much. Almost like crawl an abstraction rate. under an abstraction. Yeah, it's, it's like the that's the crawl rate basically. Okay. How okay. much can we? How much stress can we put on your server okay. uh, without crashing anything or like yeah. uh, suffering? Um, from from killing your server too much, yeah. and uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, we we just have to be reasonable with our resources, right? The web is really really Definitely. large, yep. uh, so instead of just crawling everything all mm -hmm. the time, we mm -hmm. need to make some distinctions there, right? Mm -hmm. A news website yes. probably changes quite often, yes. and we probably need to like be catching up with them every mm -hmm. now and then. Whereas a website on the history of kimchi is probably not changing as often. I mean. Nothing definitely. against kimchi, but I think like the history isn't as fast paced as the world news are. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's the crawl demand. So we try yeah. to figure out like, is this something that we need to crawl more often, or is this something where it's okay yeah. if we check up every now and then? And what goes into that decision making process? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you had that kimchi website, or if you had something like archive.org, where it's really just something that's going to be constant for a long period mm. of time, and there really isn't going to be any changes. Yeah. How do you guys determine that? So we basically uh, fingerprint content as we crawl it, right? So mm -hmm. we see like what is this page about. Mm -hmm. uh, we use that for deduplication later on, mm -hmm. but we also look into like when was this last change. So you can Definitely. tell us in things like structured data has a, a, a possibilities. Yep. You can have yep. date elements somewhere in your yep. page. Um, we more or less keep track of when or how often or how frequently things are mm -hmm. changing, and if we detect mm -hmm. that the frequency of changes is really low. Mm -hmm then we don't have to crawl as much. That has yeah, nothing to definitely. do with quality. You can have fantastic content that will rank mm -hmm, really high mm -hmm. or whatever that never changes. It's more about is this information that uh, we need to revisit every now and then or is this something that we can leave alone for a longer period of time. Now do you, use, do you guys use something like the e-tag or the last modified network header or is it more about taking that fingerprint of the content. So you can give us various um, like hints. Uh, as I said, search mm -hmm. data uh, mm -hmm. dates are one. Uh, E-tag is an interesting one as well. Mm -hmm. The HTTP headers are useful mm -hmm. for this. Uh, last modified date in sitemap, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And as more, the more useful you're making these, if you just like automatically update the last modified mm -hmm. date in the sitemap and we figure out that does not correspond to actual changes on the website or the, mm -hmm. the website mm -hmm. changes are minimal, mm -hmm. Then yeah, that's not helping us. It's not, exactly like, uh, not only that, at some point we're just going to be like, okay, so this is not useful for this particular uh, site. So, hmm. um, but as, as much information as we get, we will mm -hmm. use to figure out what we can reasonably expect. 
um, as a change frequency. Nice. So going backwards a little bit, mm -hmm. what size of sites should be worried about crawl budget? Should be worried about hitting that crawl limit? Large sites. Large like sites. And like if we were to give like millions, a, of, millions of pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So if yeah. you have under a million pages, really crawl budget is not something that you should be fine. concerned about. Yes, yes. Okay. Unless you have a really flaky server setup, but then again, crawl budget isn't your problem. Your problem is just server setup, right? Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. So do you typically see that the issue isn't really with the server setup? but more with the crawl demand, or do you see it more with the server setup? Depends on what you say the issue is. As in yeah. like, so normally um, crawl budget gets cited in many, many different mm -hmm. times when it actually wasn't an issue to begin with. It mm -hmm. was just like the quality of the content was bad, and mm -hmm. that's why we didn't index it. So we crawled it, we figured out, oh, this mm -hmm. is not worth keeping. Mm -hmm. Then we didn't index it, and people are like, yeah. so is this a crawl budget problem? And we're like, no, no, mm -hmm. we, we have crawled it, it was just not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and is that what you would typically see in like the excluded section yeah. of the GSC yeah, report, exactly. something along yeah. those lines? Okay, yeah. cool. These, these things are really helpful. Um, sometimes you also see people are like, oh yeah, my crawl budget is really low. And then we're like, yeah, but is that is that a problem? Are you having like lots of yeah. changing content? And they're like, actually, no, it's like a blog that updates once a week. And I'm like, mm. 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 <laughs> how, how big of a problem really is that? Uh, sometimes it's also people just barely missing the, the crawl window where we does not discover the yeah. URL. And if you're not yeah. submitting it in sitemaps, then we are yeah. we yeah. have to crawl another page to find Definitely. that link to that URL, yeah. and then we're going to crawl that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So using sitemap reasonably is a good idea for yeah. these things. But again, if you're not having millions of pages, then crawl budget is really an issue. Yeah, so let's say you're working with a major e-commerce mm -hmm. or something like real estate where you have hundreds of millions of pages that are a little yeah. bit smaller, maybe a little bit similar. Um, is there anything that those industries can do to make their pages mm. crawled more often or more appealing to Google? So as you said, so the thing is like being crawled more often mm -hmm. is not necessarily helping. It's not yes. giving us a signal for quality or it's mm -hmm. not meaning like, oh, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, having something crawled and then indexed and then never changing is okay as far mm -hmm. as we're, we're concerned. But mm -hmm. um, for e-commerce, I would highly recommend, if you, we were saying something very interesting, like lots of smaller pages that are very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. If they are very similar to each other, yeah. should they exist is my first question. Or yeah, is it more definitely. like a... Can you extend the content? For instance, if it's product variations mm -hmm. of it, maybe you just describe yeah. them in a table inside one page rather than having 10 pages for all the variations. Definitely. It's like, which colors are available? Well, <laughs> that's yeah. not. It almost brings to the fact that there's so many different issues that fit yeah. into crawl budget, exactly. whether it's like duplication mm -hmm. or finding the pages or. Like yes, service speed service. is an issue, yeah. right? Yeah. If you have a server that every now and then just flakes on us. Yeah. Then we don't know. Is that because it's mm -hmm. a flaky server? Or is that because we are about to overwhelm you? <laughs> you got a flaky server. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's wobbly and falling over every now and then. Then we have to be careful. No. We have to <laughs> touch very lightly on that server. So let's say someone is switching over their site to a more powerful server. Mm -hmm. What is something they should expect to see in their log files if Google's testing their service to see how much they can handle? They might see like an increase in crawl uh, activity and then like a small decrease again, and basically there's like this wave, wave motion that's yeah. going to happen. Um, but normally, when you just switch the server and nothing else changes, you might not even see yeah. us doing anything. You just see like it just continues to go through. Definitely. Uh, unless you change from something that was broken to something mm -hmm. that works, then you probably mm -hmm. see more crawling happening. Okay, so what about in the situation of migrations? A lot of sites are really hyper aware about how their site is being crawled during mm -hmm. a migration. Mm -hmm. um, are there any tips that you guys have to making sure that your crawl site is being crawled accurately? Mm. So what you can definitely do is uh, you can make sure that you're more or less progressively updating your sitemap mm -hmm. and saying like, this has mm -hmm. now changed, this has now changed, mm -hmm. and this has now changed, and it's now uh, time to crawl that, and we mm -hmm. crawl it, we get a redirect, mm -hmm. that's actually a change that is interesting for us, mm -hmm. and then uh, you can control a little bit on how mm -hmm. we discover the change in mm -hmm. the migration. Um, but generally speaking, just make sure that both your uh, both servers are up on par and like mm -hmm. running smoothly and not like flaking out every now and then or like giving us error codes. Definitely. Uh, make sure that Definitely. your your redirects are set up correctly as well. Mm -hmm. 
and that you're not accidentally blocking important things for us to understand once we are landing on the new site. If you have like a robots.txt beforehand and then you change that completely different URLs being blocked and mm -hmm. put that on the other thing, then we're like, what's happening here? What is going on? Yeah, <laughs> so that's not a great idea. So try to like do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Do not be like, we're going to change the tech stack, we're going to change the server, we're going to change the URLs, <laughs> uh, we're going to change the content, and we're going to migrate to a different domain. It's like, that's a lot. Too much for yeah. one year. Too much for one project. <laughs> no, for sure. OK, so for crawl budget, what mm. levels of a site does it affect? So if you have a CDN, will it affect mm. your site? If you have a subdomain or a domain, at what levels of your infrastructure is it affecting? That depends. Uh, so mm. generally speaking, we go on the site level, so everything mm. that is on the same domain. Okay. Uh, sometimes subdomains might be counted towards that. Sometimes they mm. are not. Uh, mm. CDNs are a weird one where it's like kind of counted against your site, but not really. <laughs> and. Um, you should normally not worry about it, uh, yep. and I think like crawl Stop budget. Stressing so much SEOs. Like, <laughs> yeah. Enjoy yourselves, and, and uh, what's interesting yeah. is uh, you. When it comes to crawl budget, where I would say like you mm. should consider this, especially if, if you're dealing with user generated content, you yeah. can try to tell us not to index or not to crawl certain things that you know yeah. are bad. Okay. So it's yeah. more of a content side of things rather than the technical infrastructure side of things. Yeah, definitely. OK, so does crawl budget actually affect both your indexing phase, crawling phase, and your rendering phase? Crawl budget does actually touch on uh, rendering, because as we render, we will mm -hmm. fetch additional resources. That comes from yeah. your crawl budget. Yeah. Because again, the, the trade-off is still there, right? When yeah. we're crawling initially, we don't want to overwhelm your server. But the same goes to when we're rendering. Mm -hmm. We don't want to overwhelm your server there. What's the yeah. point in killing your e-commerce website just because we are making mm -hmm. thousands of requests at the same time? Uh, to crawl Definitely. all these resources. Mm -hmm. So it can happen, especially if you have a large site with millions of mm -hmm. URLs and you get your caching wrong, for instance, uh, that we actually have to fetch everything over and over and over again, which means we have a lot of uh, simultaneous requests to your server. If your server then slows down significantly, then we'd be like, ooh, OK, careful. And then resource <laughs> fetches might fail. Yeah. So we might be able to like fetch uh, and render the first, I don't know, 500,000 pages, mm -hmm. but then suddenly the resources seem to fail because we're like, ah, we are not, we don't want to make more re requests at this point, uh, and then Definitely. we can't really render them. So that would be bad. Yeah. So what do we do in terms of caching for those resources? So mm -hmm. obviously with pages, we can put them in Excel sitemaps and mm -hmm. all the stuff you mentioned before with potentially structured data and then maybe even adding some network headers. But yeah. what do you think about? those resources that could be really consuming yeah. of Google's resources. <laughs> Absolutely. So the thing is, we're trying to be as aggressive as possible when we're caching mm -hmm. sub-resources, mm -hmm. such as uh, CSS, JavaScript, API calls, all that kind of stuff. If you have API calls that are not GET requests, then we can't cache them. So you want to be very careful with doing like post requests do or post. something like that. It's like, uh, <laughs> um, some APIs are doing that by default. And then yeah. I'm like, Ay, that's an interesting one, because we can't cache it. So that's going to yeah. consume your call budget quicker. Um, the other thing is uh, you can help us by making sure that URLs optimally never change. So what is a really good idea is you can mm -hmm. have content hashes in your uh, resources. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying like application.javascript, you can say application dot and then this hash that describes the content like nice so basically a, like 16 F, C, characters exactly yeah. like this, these md5 hashes yeah dot javascript then this will never change so when you're yep. making an update to your javascript mm -hmm. you get a different url so mm -hmm. we can cache the other thing forever yeah and once we get to get the mm -hmm. new html we get the new urls mm -hmm. for the javascript and then it's almost like versioning right? it's like versioning yeah. in the url exactly Nice. So, that's a great so idea. for that first version that you would have, or any particular version that you would have, would that how long is that typically cached for? It depends, but we're trying to cache yeah. as aggressively as possible. So okay. this can be like a day, this can be a week, this can be a month, and we might ignore caching headers. So if you're telling us this expires tomorrow, and we're like, no, it does not, then uh, we might just cache it nonetheless. Yeah. Great. Awesome. <laughs> so do you find that any issue, any particular industries complain more about crawl budget than others? I think or talk more about it? That's true. I think like e-commerce and publishers are quite uh, uh, yes. prone to this because they have yeah. historically, typically large sites with lots yeah. of pages. Yeah. And they might actually run into this. Uh, we had a really interesting situation uh, with one webmaster presented that 
uh, at a webmaster conference in Zurich once. Um, in Japan, it's a mm -hmm. website that has lots of user-generated content, mm -hmm. and they do machine learning to figure out if the quality of the content that was yeah. produced is considered good or not. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not good, then they put it in no index and yes. they put it in robots.txt so that we're yeah. not wasting crawl budget on it. And that way they steer, yeah. the, because they had a crawl yeah. budget of like 200,000 pages per day or something like that, yeah. but they had like a million coming in and most of yeah. it was spam. So they're like, yeah. oh, it's annoying if we just waste our crawl budget for the day on spam that yeah. will not get indexed anyway. So that's an interesting one. So do you believe that there's an overall quality metric that Google uses? So for that particular site in general, because they had so much non-high quality content, did that affect Google's outlook on their content overall? Not really. It was yeah. more like this This page is not good. We're not going to put it in the index. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. the outcome okay. really. Or is it, okay, if nice. it's light on content, if someone just yeah. literally posts a picture and says like, ha ha, then that's <laughs> not great content necessarily, especially if the picture is just a repost of some, I don't know, meme or some, uh, some stock photo, right? Yeah, definitely. So what are some things that we as webmasters and SEOs and agency people can recommend to our clients on how to help Googlebot out mm. and help your rendering system out as well? So if you know that there's URLs that you don't need to render the page, mm -hmm. and that's a very big be careful here, because yes. if you're like blocking the entire API, because they're like, ah, mm. oh, we don't need the API, and then the JavaScript does need the API to render the page, then yeah. that you should block. You don't block. get the full experience. Exactly. Oh. Do not yeah. block that, because then we might actually not see much content. Mm. Uh, but if you have something that definitely, like internal analytics or some internal like tools or mm -hmm. some chat tool that pops up or whatever, mm. Um, just yeah. don't don't let that be crawled because yeah. what's the point? Yeah. Um, also, you can use. And do you recommend blocking it in the robots.txt for those particular resources, if you don't like want kind of throwing them in a folder? And... Sure. Yes. Yes. Just be okay. careful that you're not putting something in robots.txt that turns out to be useful and important later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can also big caution there. <laughs> yes. You can also, especially with client-side rendered apps, you oftentimes have like a bunch of API calls going to and from. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can proxy that through like a facade kind of thing. You basically build a little application that all it does is it takes one request for one mm -hmm. specific piece of data that you need to render the page, mm -hmm. uh, makes all the API requests and all the backend requests mm -hmm. that it needs, maybe has a layer of caching as well yeah. to make this faster, and then has one response going back. That way you have one yeah. response, uh, one request, one response cycle. So it may sound a bit goofy, but this is something like GraphQL? Like GraphQL, yeah. exactly, okay. yes. Right. But with GraphQL, again, be careful. Do not use the post mode. No Make post sure mode, that it people. uses get requests, <laughs> not post requests. Okay. Uh, right, yeah, cool. but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can do, and, yeah. and basically cut off the bits that you don't want crawled, um, mm -hmm. and give us information of the frequency of change mm -hmm. in sitemaps and stuff, mm -hmm. um, so that we can get a better grasp of where we should be spending our time. Yeah. Definitely. And do you see any pitfalls that people fall into with crawl budget quite often? Well, definitely the robots one. Like that yeah. happens all the time that they mm -hmm. block something that turns out to be an important resource. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it does not need to load the CSS, and we're like, <laughs> we don't know what the page yeah. looks like, so we need the layout. Exactly. Or this, people sometimes fall for it when they do like A/B testing. That like something gets mm -hmm. no index when they don't want it, and then they waste yeah. crawl budget on something that doesn't end up in the index. And yeah. I'm like, mm. yeah, like all, all sorts of things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is when people are dealing with servers that are not configured correctly, and then they mm -hmm. just give you like a 500 something. Mm -hmm. And we're like, OK, if this happens, then we're not crawling as much anymore because we don't mm -hmm. want to overwhelm your mm -hmm. server. And then people mm -hmm. are like, why is Google not crawling this? And we're like, well, because your server constantly tells us that it's overwhelmed. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. so let's say you have a very large site, and you know you have these mega powerful servers mm -hmm. with gigabytes and gigabytes of data. Are we? Um, is there any way that we can tell Google that, hey, you're, you can crawl us more like we expect you to crawl us more here? Right, you can't really. Okay. Uh, we are right. we're detecting that. What you can do is you can yeah. limit us, but you can't yeah. really like say more please, more please. Okay. Um, the crawl scheduler is relatively clever when it comes to these kind of things. And mm. normally, if we detect like, oh, there's lots of good content, uh, good content out there on this page, yeah. and um, the sitemap is full of, of URLs, then we will try to grab as much as we can. And as yeah. long as your server doesn't like tell us not to. We'll continue doing that. So eventually, yeah. the the crawl budget might rank uh, ramp up to what you would expect to see. Ah, oh, lovely. So yeah. just keep creating fresh, great quality content. That's really what it comes That's down to. To generally, get the yeah. answer to pretty much everything: yeah. good <laughs> quality <laughs> content if it's fresh, also great. Awesome. Yes. Alexis, thank you so much for being with me yeah. and uh, having this fantastic conversation. And I yeah. think there was like a bunch of nuggets in there. And uh, it's, it's great having you here. So thank you so much. You did this. Yes. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, see you soon again. Thanks so much, everyone.
Next episode, we have Eric with us and we're gonna be talking about page speed, how it works in ranking, what to look out for, what to not do, and how to not get it wrong. It's such a great topic because so many people do get it wrong, I'm afraid. So, don't miss out on the next episode.